six and one, and all six of those victories have come consecutively. Newman takes the tip, and we are set to go. Louisiana Tech in the white. The freshman brings it up. Wanted to get it to Bacho as Bacho's man had left him, but they can't do it on this particular occasion. Here's Ree at the top, hand off to Newman. And a three ball is up, and a three ball is good, and knocked in by Drevon Mangum, the graduate student from Roxboro, North Carolina. We're going to see a lot more of Mangum than we might normally. Here's the starting lineup for WKU, McHenry, Newman, Allen, Marshall, and Faye. It's a great job by Mangum to hit that early three-pointer, being in the, he's part of the shift in the starting lineups. Look at the work down low, Bacho banging around with Faye. It's a long two by Brandon Newman from the corner. He's second on this WKU team in points per game, but he's coming off a game when he was over as seven field goal attempts against Middle Tennessee, including five from long range and didn't hit a thing. So each team has scored on their first possession. This is Isaiah Crawford. Gets in trouble, kicks it out again to Mangum. On line, but a little bit long. Bacho goes a long way to get the offensive rebound. And Crawford cannot handle the pass. It's tipped out of his hands and touched last by the Hilltoppers, 15 on the shot clock. And that was all the philosophy of long shots, making long rebounds on that missed three from Mangum. Popped out long. Bacho was actually boxed out on the inside, but because it went long, he was able to take advantage of it and keep possession for the Bulldogs. He is a mobile post player, isn't he, Bacho? He is. Oh, he, and he was just wide open. His man left him. They had missed him again on the paint. Crawford has six to shoot. He drives. He hangs. Bacho's got it. Gets rid of it with the left hand. Too strong off the window. Bacho did a great job of grabbing the offensive rebound, but then put a little too much mustard on the shot against the window. He thought that was an automatic, too, because he put it off the glass, started running back the other way, and then turned around and realized it rolled out. Here's McHenry. Fakes left, dribbles right, shoots the floater, and scores. He did something not a lot of players can do, and that's got a little bit of a half step on Crawford defensively. Well, it's a great little half step that he did the stutter step to get enough space and then hit a very tough runner going down the lane. 4-3, Western Kentucky with a couple of buckets. Louisiana Tech with the early triple. And it's going to stay with Louisiana Tech, 14 on the shot clock. The Hilltoppers are coming off of a victory against Middle Tennessee, 88-65. to Three has it rejected, and there's five on the shot clock. Good ball fake there by Isaiah Crawford. Started that whole sequence. He throws the ball fake. His man goes flying, and now the Hilltoppers were playing shorthanded. Everybody had to rotate, eventually kicking it to the side. That allowed Devin Reed to drive the lane and draw the foul. Reed making his second start tonight. He started his first game of the season in their 40-point win over FIU, and that's because of Tyler Henry being out. We've seen him come off the bench and pump accurate three-pointers. He seems to be a streaky shooter in the time we've seen him in a reserve role this year. Average just five points a game in conference uh, in uh, conference play, but had nine in that win over FIU. Three bags the second free throw. This Louisiana Tech team 69-plus percent from the free-throw line. Bacho is right there, rejects it. It's tipped up into the air and grabbed by Mango. And that was excellent defense by Bacho, who was not only keeping an eye on the, bar, uh, on the ball, but also his man, Babacar Fay, who was going down the lane. He split the difference, never gave him a chance. Three for three, it rattles out, and the rebound claimed by Brandon Newman. By the way, Newman is a guy to watch on the offensive glass as well. Victor, nearly half of his rebounds have been offensive rebounds this year. And he is the number one rebounder at six per game. Louisiana Tech comes right back. Crawford. Six five, Louisiana Tech with the lead. Bacho working hard on the glass. He's had a bundle of rebounds early. Newman running, finds Mangum, 
gets to the goal, hooks it up. It rolls across. There's the follow by Bacho, but they're going to wipe it away. They're going to call the foul on Tyrone Marshall on the initial drive before Bacho put it back. Let's take another look. Here you see Mangum going in at the up and under. With a 24 on the foul before Bacho falls up. So I'll send Mangum to the free throw line where he's hitting 76%. Big fellow puts a soft touch on the first one. And that gives Louisiana Tech a three-point lead. And a substitution for two. Moore comes in. Tegan Moore, a freshman from Dry Ridge, Kentucky, averaging 4.4 points and about a rebound and a half. And Mangum's second free throw is good as well. You might be calling a lot of substitutions tonight for the Hilltoppers. They have nine players that average at least 18 minutes a game. So their first-year head coach, Steve Lutz, does not rely on just a couple of players. He plays a full lineup, rotates them in and out. This is McHenry. On line but long, Bacho has another rebound. That's at least four, maybe more. Yeah, that's his third. Officially, that's his third. Oh, they're going to give, they're going to have to retotal that. <laughs> Crawford, look at the move inside. Boy, that's that slow, controlled pace by Crawford just to read where the opening is. Nice little hop step now, a 7-0 run for the Bulldogs over the last minute, 40. 10-4. Allen to the rim. Crawford sails and rejects it. His timing is impeccable. This for three. Ree leaves it a little bit short. The Hilltoppers on the move. Trying to break this run by Louisiana Tech, and there is a guy who can do it. Don McHenry. He's a left-hander. He floats. He's got a lot of moves. He can get to the bucket. He can shoot from distance. He's the complete offensive player. And he's, he's getting a little... Uh, in the lane a little too easily probably for Talvin Hester's liking. Newman kicks it out. Mangum drills it for three. Here's Moore on the run. Gets by Newman and then it's swatted away. Bacho was there to defend. And we'll take a timeout with 15 minutes and 11 seconds remaining in the first half. Louisiana Tech leading 13-6 over Western Kentucky University. J.P. Morgan Wealth Management. Single day, he really can't not get better. Tegan Moore is at the free throw line. He's a 69.6% shooter. One of the few true freshmen on this roster out of Dry Ridge, Kentucky. Slow start for the Hilltoppers so far, shooting 37%, 3 of 8 shooting. Louisiana Tech, 4 of 8, 2 of those 4 on a three-pointers, and then during that timeout, I mean, they're on the other side of the floor from us, but somebody was listening to you because Bacho now has four rebounds. So you've got some kind of pull and rank around here. Well, I just went back mentally and pictured all four of them. I need that kind of help. i got some bills I owe. Well, can he, you pull, he's got can, two offensive can you, rebounds. Can you, pull, can you pull that for me, a little help? I can. <laughs> Crawford oh, off the window. Really gosh. nice, huh? Beautiful hesitation and control. Misdirection to get his man on his on his heels, and he drives lane and kisses it off the glass. That's Jordan Crawford, the 6'3 sophomore from Ruston. McHenry with the floater, a little bit strong off the window, and a foul call. And they may get Bacho, they may get Crawford. And they're going to get Crawford on that one. Bacho was turned around. They get Crawford reaching in, slapping down. Let's see if my memory is perfect, though. Do you have Bacho for two offensive rebounds? I do not. One offensive, three defensive. I, they're wrong. <laughs> Enoch Calumbe, who's had eight starts. <laughs> the left-hander at the line. I love how you're showing everybody out who's watching a little insight of what I have to deal with the entire <laughs> game. <laughs> Dad, no, you're wrong. Calumbe is a Canadian. He's from Quebec by way of Indian Hills Community College. 60% free throw shooter. Scores on both of those. Both teams now three or four from the line here early on. Newman 
Maybe passed up a couple of shots. Kicks it to Mangum. That turned out to be the better choice, didn't it? Boy. Mangum from the corner for three. All four of Mangum's shots getting the start tonight have come from deep, and he's hit three of four. He already has 11 points. He's got well better than a point a minute so far. Almost two points a minute. Guy who came in averaging five and a half a contest. Four from distance. Rattles out. Mangum sails in for the rebound. And now Newman will run. He'll stop as he lopes into front court. He looks back. And Calvin Hester calls out play number two. Mangum hooks it to Crawford at the top. Back to Mangum left side. Got another one. He is ripping it. Well, he has already set his season high of made three-pointers. Howard working hard to clear the shot over Bacho, and he scores nicely off the window. Three times a season, Mangum hit two three-pointers. He has four already on the night with 14 points, and if he hits another three-pointer, that'll tie his career high. Jack Edlin and Brandon Newman are set to come back in for the Hilltoppers. That's an ill-advised pass. Fumbled away, McHenry working, puts it up, blocked by Newman, rebounded by Newman. He's on the run. Newman gets into the lane on the other end. The late feed to Bacho, puts it up and misses, and a blocking foul called. But how about the work by Newman on both ends of the court? And picking up the pace there, hurrying it down the floor so he can create an advantage. Winds up dropping it off to the big fellow who gets the block call on the defense, so he'll go to the line. Bacho has shot more free throws than any other Bulldog. He's been at the line now 125 times, 65.3% shooter. Take a look end to end. Newman on the defensive end when that shot falls short. Look at his pace down the floor. He outrun everybody else and make it a three on two and he drops it off for Bacho who just misses on the attempt. Now has a chance to at least salvage one point with his free throw. He cannot one of them. Columbe pulls off the rebound. 21-11. We see Tech up by double figures in the first half. And remember, if you've just joined us, Talik Chavez not available to Louisiana Tech tonight because of personal reasons. Marshall outside can't shoot from there. Shot clock at three. At two. At one, jump hook, no good. Offensive rebound pulled off. It's on the floor loose and a scramble for it. And Bacho is able to lean all the way down from the first layer of clouds and pick that one up. <laughs> he had Isaiah Crawford on the ground trying to fight for that ball, but it rolled right to Bacho's feet. By the way, we're going to talk a little football with uh, head coach Sonny Cumby at halftime. More specifically, on the just completed recruiting class for Louisiana Tech. Miller has come in for the Bulldogs. Terry Miller, wearing number 34, will be defending down low in white. Here's Marshall, stutter dribble, fades and can't shoot, and then throws it off his teammate. He tried to get it. Down to Rodney Howard, the 6'10 senior from Michigan by way of Georgia Tech. And that one was fumbled away. And we'll take a timeout with exactly 12 minutes remaining in the first half. Louisiana Tech 21. WKU. He live shooting. He is a 6'8 graduate student from Roxboro, North Carolina. He started his career at Radford. And he's been throwing those three-pointers down like dropping gumbo in a, a dropping sausage in a gumbo pot. This is Miller outside. He won't do much with it from there. He hands it to Crawford. Half the shot clock to use. Crawford at the top. We'll take the three from straight away. It rims out. Newman takes a flat-footed rebound. And here comes Jack Edlin, the freshman from Louisville, who's played in 16 games now off the bench. Howard forces it up, misses, grabs his own rebound, and is fouled in his second shot attempt. They had Miller on that foul. It was close to being Isaiah Crawford. That could have been his second. It winds up being the first on Miller to send Howard to the free throw line. There you see 34 in white with a bit too much contact. And Howard 
is a 64% free throw shooter. Averaging 10 points on the year and five rebounds. His first stop collegiately was Georgia Tech. Mangum goes to the bench. Three is back in. Crawford is in the game as well. Both Crawfords. Miller and Jalen Henderson. This for three, a little bit long from the side by Henderson. Colum Bay gets it to Edlin, can't penetrate, his pass is deflected, and a foul called on Crawford. Oh, yeah, that's well, a hustle foul. That is, but that's also his second foul. They called him for a cheap one early in the first half. That's two on Crawford. Still 11 minutes to go. Take another look as Henderson got back on defense before Crawford jumps out there to try to get the steal, but then he gets a little bit, a little bit of a push. So Crawford's going to have to go to the bench. And Mangum comes right back off the bench after a very brief rest and replaces Isaiah Crawford. Bit of a scoring drought here for the Bulldogs. Have scored in the last 241, but still holding on to an eight-point lead. And it's been it's been as big as 12. Callum Bay hands it off to Allen. Allen working on Henderson. Four seconds to shoot. This will count if it goes. It does not. Henderson is there for the. Backside rebound. Now Crawford working against Newman. Henderson snaking inside. Shoots the floater. Got a good look at it, but missed it off to the right side. The loose ball is picked up. One on two. Callum Bay works down. That's blocked. Rejected. Put back up. And Miller grabs it. Boy, and we are seeing the strength. Look, both of these teams represent the best in the conference. WKU offensively is the best, but defensively Louisiana Tech is the best in Conference USA. And right now it's the defense that winning it out, winning out and frustrating the Hilltoppers here in the first 10 minutes. Mangum and Rhea have been swatting them down and a driving layup is good and a foul call. Jordan Crawford, the sophomore from Ruston, a freshman, all Conference USA freshman team last year. When head coach Steve Lutz furious at his team to stop and play that Ole defense. Ole! As he goes running by, instead of closing that lane and stopping the ball, the defenders all stopped short and left the lane wide open that Crawford was able to take advantage of and score the hoop. And now Crawford will attempt to give Louisiana Tech an 11-point lead. It's 24-13. to 13. We are at the midway point in the first half. McHenry almost threw that one by Newman, but he grabbed it. Bacho back in defending. Oh, look at those two bang. Bacho defends it, and that sweeping layup, no good by Faye. This is a three ball up and a rare miss for Mangum tonight. And it's going to go to the Hilltoppers. Wow. Bacho swatted that one out. He didn't try to grab the rebound. He tried to swat it out to a teammate like you see a lot of NBA teams do. But they call the foul on Bacho going over the back on the swat to knock the ball back to his teammate. How many is that on that's, Bacho? That's, that's his first. That's what I thought. He normally plays without foul difficulty. Redefending. Bacho rises and slams it away. Now they call that foul on Devin Ree. And Ree is incredulous. If we have another look at it, I don't think you're going to see contact by Ree. Oh, they're going to take a look right now, but they're not going to look at the foul. They're going to take a look and see if it's a goaltend. Because there was a foul, and Bacho got right up by the rim. Let's take another look. They call the contact right there. Okay, I, I that's there was contact. And they call the contact after the spin move, but what they want to watch is watch Bacho as he elevates. Here's the contact on the body. And then Bacho goes up for the block, and what they want to see is whether or not it was a goaltend. 
They're going to count it. They are going to say goal 10. So a foul and a goaltending call. And that ought to put the shooter at the line, right? Yeah, he was going to the line anyway, but now he's going to go for one instead of two. He'll give him the bucket, and he'll get one free throw. So Marshall, in a weird way, will try to complete the three-point play. <laughs> right, how do you make a three-point play when you don't make the bucket? Yeah. And you shoot one free throw, right? Here's how you do it. And he's a good free throw shooter, too. It's a little better than 74%. Twenty-four sixteen now. Louisiana Tech leading on its own court, where it has been so so good over many many years. Three looking inside. Bacho wants it, but he's not available at the moment. Now this is Crawford on the reverse dribble. Shoots oh behind the inadvertent screen. Yeah. That was kind of a, a block out by Bacho. He was there. Trying to get out of the way, but the defender couldn't do anything. And there's a nice shot laid in by Newman. And this is the pace that WKU likes to play. Yep. Steve Lutz, for his last two seasons, played at Texas A&M Corpus Christi, where he went 47-23. and 23. And then I know you've done some of their games. I had a chance to do a couple of their games as well. And he really likes that up-tempo pace. Three for three. It rims out. Marshall goes way up. Knocks one of his own men down as he grabs the rebound. Three on five right now. Now... Four on five, now five on five. It didn't matter. McHenry that's, can look, score from I, anywhere, I, right? I mentioned it earlier. It's, it's it's probably too much for Telvin Hester's comfort that McHenry's finding it that easy to get into the lane. That's his second floating jumper that he's hit in this ball game, and he's had two or three other opportunities that he's that he's missed. Now we've got a six-point game. Louisiana Tech leading. The lead has been cut in half. Newman snakes his way right in, scores with the right hand from the left side, and they let him get to point blank range. That's his first bucket of the night. And of note, looking at the scoring column, Bacho in the middle has four rebounds, only one field goal attempt, and has yet to score tonight. And it's been a while since he's had a rebound or a score. McHenry out front. Stops, pulls the trigger, and nails it. He is a pure shooter with a lot of variety. He now has eight on the ball game. Told and guess what? Here comes WKU. Yeah. Yep, their patience is paying off. Some frustration earlier, but now they've hit four or five from the floor. And they pulled it within six with just over seven minutes to go in the opening half. Here's Newman. Bacho comes out. Newman slides to the slot. Throws a dangerous pass to Ree in the opposite corner. This is Bacho. He's going to have a path to the goal. Shoots with the left hand. It bounces. It bounces. And it goes. Remember, his only other field goal attempt came up two minutes into the ball game. That little three-footer when he kissed it off the glass and it rolled all the way around and out. That time it touched every part of the rim on the bounces. It fell for him. Well, that last shot would have been worth a free game on a pinball machine. Ree is right there to grab the rejection. Newman calls out play number one. Sean Newman, a sophomore from Los Angeles. His first stop was Fullerton College, where he averaged 13 points, four rebounds, and six assists. Newman makes a bad pass looking to his left. He thought a teammate was there. He wasn't. The other Newman works down and scores. Yeah, Newman, that time, made his way down the lane. He was going to kick it to the corner for Mangum, but he didn't know Mangum was leaving the corner to go to the basket. That's why it was a turnover and led to an easy bucket for the Hilltoppers. That ship, a ship had already sailed, hadn't it? Yes, indeed. Crawford fakes left, dribbles right, gets the big guy to come out on him. Somebody's got to be open. Bacho is drawing a double team. And Louisiana Tech right now leads by six with 5.56 to go in the opening period in Ruston, Louisiana. Okay, when you turn around, you're going to see some more. You was eighth out of the nine-team conference USA. So early on, it was Louisiana Tech's defense that was causing so much frustration for the Hilltoppers. But in the last five or six minutes, they've obviously found a little more of that confidence to cut into that deficit and have just be a six-point game. The main difference in this game is four three-pointers from Drayvon Mangum. And Western Kentucky does not have one yet. Yeah, they've, only, they've attempted four, missed all of them. He's hit four of his five, uh, six attempts. And Mangum just let that one loose on line, but a little bit off the mark. And 
Bacho gets tangled up and a little slow getting up. Let's see who, against whom they call the foul. I think it's going to be against Bacho, is it not? Yes, it is, and Miller's going to come back in. Yep, that's his second. So Crawford, Isaiah Crawford with two, now Bacho with two. And we may not see Bacho for the rest of the half, but 5.38 to go, and Miller is going to come in after this free throw. Gallum Bay, 60% free throw shooter. Came off the bench tonight, but he's had eight starts. It's a four-point game. Right now for Louisiana Tech, it's Miller in the middle. Bangham at one forward position. Newman is in the game. Bree is in the game. And Crawford. Crawford gets to the rim, leaves it a little bit short. Offensive rebound pulled off. It's thrown away. Newman can't make it. Uh, rather, uh, Mangum can't make it happen. And it goes back to Western Kentucky. Yeah, Rodney Howard tried to give Louisiana Tech a gift. He got the defensive rebound, but off balance just threw it right up to the front of his basket. And it turned into a steal for Tech, but Bulldogs couldn't convert. It's a two-possession game after Louisiana Tech was leading a couple of times by 12. Just under five minutes to go. First half. That's stripped. Bangham comes away with it. Third steal for the Bulldogs. Now Crawford will wait until the retinue floats by and put it in play five on five in the half-court offense. Miller spinning. Kicks it left side. Makes a bad pass. Good idea. Newman is able to run down the retrieval. Seven to shoot. Mangum for three. Rattles out. Miller, big offensive rebound. And he's still got it. Everybody wants, on the Western Kentucky side, wants a travel, but no whistle. And Miller really worked hard to grab that thing. Now he got Now he got held. He'll yeah. call a foul. That's a that's great effort by Miller. Off balance, trying to get possession of the ball, but still fighting, not giving up on it. Keeps the possession. That's by the big man. Awkward, didn't it? But Miller was able to keep it legal. WKU happening in front of their bench. They were screaming for travel. I'm not sure he ever had possession long enough to have a travel. The ball was bouncing all over the place. Well, the shot clock reset at 20. And Louisiana Tech needs a basket, leading only by four. No Crawford, no Bacho, and no points in the last 250 for Louisiana Tech. Three to shoot, this for three, and it is rammed home. Jordan Crawford. That's a big, big bucket. Mangum hustles over but cannot prevent the three ball from Tegan Moore, who just checked into the game for the second time off the bench. Yeah, that was Crawford's sixth made three-pointer of the season, but then the Bulldogs late getting back, and Moore was just sitting in the corner, had all day to think about that. That's a guy who can score, Tegan Moore. Yeah. He averaged 32 a game his senior year in high school, third most in the state of Kentucky. They play a little basketball in I, that state. So from what I hear. Crawford thought about another three. Now he'll take it. Leaves it short. Miller battling for the rebound, but it's grabbed by Moore. Edlin on the move. Nearly bumped off the ball. Kicks it out for a three. Swish! And here comes Callum Bay, and here come his teammates, WKU. And right now, it is a one-point game. Western Kentucky has made up. And attack was hitting them on both sides, defensively frustrating them, offensively putting points on the board. But Isaiah Crawford's been on the bench with two. Bacho's been on the bench with two. And Western Kentucky has made themselves, invited themselves right back into this ballgame. Crawford at the point. Now remember, Bacho is on the bench, and so is Isaiah Crawford with two fouls. That three ball went halfway down and then reverberated away as Newman tried to make it good from the corner. That's swatted down by Miller. Edlin took it too far into the postman, and Miller rejected it. Bangham kicks out, three for three, left a little bit short, rebound, goes all the way to the top of the circle. Six blocks for Louisiana Tech on the defensive end. Western Kentucky has yet to block a shot, but the Bulldogs 
relying a little too much now on that outside shot, especially with your top two scorers on the bench. Louisiana Tech's won for their last eight from the field. And it's a one-point game. Western Kentucky can take the lead right here, and it does. There is the versatility of Callum Bay, I think, on that score. It was, it was Callum Bay. He has nine. Only two field goals, but he's made all four of his free throws and has five rebounds. Well, that's three points greater than the season's average of six. Or three. Another outside shot. It's just two. For Louisiana Tech now, they're falling into it. Mangum was hot earlier, and it's no problem when he was on that roll. But now your two top scorers are on the bench. Another bucket by the Hilltoppers on the inside. And the Bulldogs are not doing themselves any favors by taking these long shots. Patience on the offensive end. Work and try to drive into the basket. And don't settle for 20-footers. And Moore on the other end was able to get to the basket and score on the short drifter. This is Crawford. That's offensive. They're going to call that on Miller. Miller was trying to go down the lane and just kind of gave a little forearm chuck and knocked this man backwards. And now Will Allen checks into the game for the first time. A 6'7 sophomore from New Orleans. He wears 14 in white. This past three or four minutes has been non-productive yeah. for Louisiana Tech. Oh, they led by 12 on a couple of occasions. It's a 10-0 run, to your point, by WKU over the last two and a half minutes. If you want to go even bigger, it's a 14-3 run over the last five minutes. 62 seconds to go in the first half. McHenry tries to sneak inside, but he's cut off in the slot. Allen is defending. And let's see what they call. They may get Allen for the foul. They do. They do. Body contact while Howard was losing his balance, but that's a big challenge to guard the 6'11", 250-pound forward. And I think this is going to be one and one. He got the roll. He'll get the second shot. Here's a look at where the contact was made. Watches Howard left side of the lane trying to drive in. He's going to start to lose his bounce a little bit, but they call the body contact with Allen, who was trying to body him up on his side. That's what sent Howard to the line, who hits his second one. So Louisiana Tech in the throes of a late first half slump. Now trail by five. We've had a 17-point swing over the last three or four minutes. Newman works inside, spinning, gets double teamed, and they call a foul. With a little more than a half a minute to go, this is going to be one and one for Newman. First foul on Dante Allen, who averages eight points a game, but he's the only hilltopper on the floor that has yet to score tonight. Newman is a good free throw shooter, better than 81%. In fact, he's the best free throw shooter on this team at 81.3. Tech could use them, and Newman delivers both of them. That's desperately needed points for the Bulldogs, who still no field goals in the last 340 for Louisiana Tech. And a timeout is called by WKU. They had one to use, so why not? Have you been to Bowling Green, Kentucky? I, it is a beautiful, beautiful part of that. There's about a two-second difference between the clocks. And McHenry's going to try to take the shot clock down as far as he can. He's guarded... We've by Mangum. Him, we've seen him use that crossover to get into the lane. Ten seconds to shoot. Moore gets there, puts it off the window, no good. And Howard may have been on the back of a Tech Bulldog. I think that's what they may get. Oh, oh they no, they don't. Up. They don't. They put Howard at the line. 
They're going to call that on Allen that he pulled his arm down. I was with you. It sure did look like that the big man, Rodney Howard, went over the back. But let's take another look. Keep your eye there in the middle of the screen. Oh, I, you know, I see where the contact was with Allen underneath. As you might take another look. Watch when Howard gets the ball. Allen hits him, but it looks like the way Howard got the ball, it was by going over his back, but they called the contact on, on uh, Allen instead. On second look, I just would have not blown the whistle at all, just let it play out. But it is Howard at the free throw line, and he makes Louisiana Tech pay. Good night so far for Howard. He only shoots 64% on the season from the free throw line, but he's 5 of 5 with one to come. The Western Kentucky with a spurt offensively over the last three or four minutes, looking for its 40th point, which would put them right on pace for their league leading production of 80 per game on average. Eight point seven seconds to go. Louisiana Tech will have time to execute an offensive play. Howard for the Hilltoppers has eight points. He's made one field goal, six of six from the free throw line. Callum Bay's got nine points. He's made two field goals, four for four from the free throw line. Overall, WKU is 12 of 13 from the line. Four seconds. Long three, and it's coming up woefully short. Put back in by Ree. Ree with a reverse layup as the horn sounds. And that shot came up very, very short, but Ree would have nothing of that. And he sticks it back. Crawford and Bacho spent a lot of time watching this game from the sideline after their second fouls. We'll see if their return to the lineup here to start the second half makes any difference as Louisiana Tech gave up a 12-point lead in the first half. Yeah, and, and on, in terms of scoring, the two of them combined only have six points. Crawford, two of four from the floor. Bacho, one of two. And it's been a while since Bacho has grabbed a rebound. He had four early. But his presence has not yet been felt. That long three-point shot comes up a bit short by Brandon Newman. And Louisiana Tech down by three has a chance to pull within one or perhaps take the lead. A couple of interesting tidbits from the end of the first half when we've got our first dead ball I'll tell you about. Newman hands it off to Isaiah Crawford. He skids to a stop. He shoots. It's rejected. He gets it back. Puts it on the floor, fakes, throws up the half hook, no good, tries to tip it, no good. And here comes Western Kentucky. McHenry is fouled in backcourt. That's probably a frustration foul by Isaiah Crawford as he picks up his third just for less than one minute here into the second half. And he is apparently going to go right back to the bench as Jordan Crawford, no relation, will replace him. And that's exactly what Isaiah Crawford did not want to happen. And this is not even... A foul that makes any sense in backcourt. Yeah. Last 5.56 of the first half, Western Kentucky won 16-7. In that time frame, Louisiana Tech went 2-11 of 11 from the floor. As you see an offensive foul called there on Babacar Fay. Last basically six minutes of the first half, the Bulldogs went 2-11 of 11 from, the, from the floor. Their last seven field goal attempts, taking away the putback off the air ball in, all three-pointers. Mm. They just hit one. That's what goes to my point of what I was saying. They were settling for that outside shot. The one shot they made at the very end was off an air ball from the three-pointer. And Marshall breaks away for the flush. Louisiana Tech down 42-37 on their own court. In the last 14 years, they've won nearly 90% of their games in this building. They're 169 and 21. But having some trouble tonight against visiting Western Kentucky. Victor, I don't know if you heard it earlier, but these teams have played 42 times in their basketball histories. Each team has 21 wins. That's how close it's been over the years. Very close in this series. Give Western Kentucky a lot of credit. They, they were taking some shots early in this ball game, where they withstood the defensive pressure from the Bulldogs got some fouls on a couple of individual players, and then they really exploded in the last six minutes of the first half. And Western Kentucky may have bailed Newman out on the baseline. He was fouled. He was in trouble looking to try to desperately find a teammate. 20 on the shot clock. We've played a minute and a half in the final period. That's a good inside pass to Bacho, but he can't finish. Bacho comes back down with it. 
And Bacho was fouled before the shot, apparently. And they're going to get on the foul, Faye. Babakar Faye from Senegal. He's also seen duty at the College of Charleston. There's a look underneath. So many times we've seen Bacho make that shot. Remember, his first miss was from three feet away off the backboard, rolled around there. He misses one close in the lane. Just everybody just seems a little bit out of sorts after that first seven or eight-minute barrage when much of that was coming from Trayvon Mangum and his three-point shooting. Louisiana Tech just has not been able to find a rhythm. Crawford off the mark on the last shot. McHenry is not. Boy, he can create a lot of shots, and he's very accurate, isn't he? He sure is. Reason why he's top three scorer in conference play. We've seen him hit from the outside, but we've really seen his ability to drive into the lane. We have not seen him shoot a lot of three balls tonight, but he had 33 of them converted coming into this game and shooting 42.3% from out court. He's only taken one three-pointer, but he hasn't had to. He's been, had so much success getting into the paint. Somebody needs to find an offensive rhythm. That was a late pass to Bacho, but he's there. Too strong again. Puts now it back short. up with a left hand and comes up shy. And just out of sync. Too hard on the first shot, and then air balls the follow-up attempt. McHenry had that one rejected by Newman. What a beautiful block. Bacho is defending. That shot goes awry. Ball is bouncing around. There are two players out of bounds. It came down off of one of them. I think it's going... Call a foul. I think they called it on, on either Devin Ree or Drayvon Mangum. Called it on Mangum. It looked like Louisiana Tech was getting control, but you're right. Bodies on the floor everywhere. Here's another look at it coming right at you, trying to avoid Bacho. Rolls off to the side. Yeah. And there you see two Louisiana Tech players kind of bumping into each other, and it's big Rodney Howard on the floor. He called Mangum on the foul. And meanwhile, Western Kentucky moves out in front 44-37. Right now, Louisiana Tech is in trouble. It's been a bit of a fits and starts game for Louisiana Tech. The Bulldogs have not gotten into a an offensive rhythm, at least no. among those who normally provided, and that would be Bacho, and that would be Crawford, and of course, Chavez unavailable to Louisiana Tech tonight, missing this game because of personal reasons. Field goal percentage for Louisiana Tech down to 34%. 0 for 6 in this half here in the first basically three minutes. They've only taken one three-pointer. They've missed all six field goal attempts. Louisiana Tech is 77 and 16 in this building against Conference USA opponents. And a bit uncharacteristically missing at the free throw line. Now 6 for 11 from the free throw line. Bacho sends that one off course with a beautiful block. Well, that one on Mangum, that's going to be his second. Yeah, this is this is getting dicey for the Bulldogs. Yeah, Mangum has two, Bacho has two, Allen has two, Miller has two, Crawford on the bench with three. And McHenry, 88 point, uh, make it 83.3%. He's the most accurate free throw shooter for WKU. What's his point total now? Henry's got 11 on 5 of 9 shooting. That's his first free throw attempt. Four rebounds. He's averaging about 15 and a half. Forty-six, thirty-seven. This is the biggest lead in the game for Western Kentucky. Plenty of time on the shot clock. 4-3 from the wing. A little bit short by Ree. The Ree for three combination has not materialized. He's going to stay on this end as the foul is on Marshall. That's his third. He's the first hilltop really in foul trouble. Callum Bay comes back in the game and replaces Marshall. Twenty on the shot clock after the foul. More than half of Louisiana Tech's field goal attempts tonight have come from deep. But they're just 5 of 21 from behind the line. That's not good enough. Mangum gets to the rim, whirls the ball around, and lays it in. That's what you need more of. Find some offensive confidence. Look, you can keep shooting three-pointers all day. 
the odds will tell you eventually something's going to go in, but when time is of the essence and you were up 12 and now you're down 9, attack the glass, try to draw a foul, get layups like Western Kentucky's doing right now. That's and their third drive to the basket here in the second half. Howard did a wonderful job of blocking out, if you will, blocking out Bacho, who was trying to get around him to get to the shooter. We have played four minutes in the second half. Western Kentucky leading 48-39 now. Crawford gets to the rim and lays it in. Two-year point, two in a row for the Bulldogs. Two in a row, getting right there to the backboard, getting it up and off the glass and in. Here's McHenry, guarded by the taller Mangum. Newman, guarded by Tex Newman. Howard, nice little jump hook over Bacho. And we've got a timeout with 15.37 to go. Western Kentucky Four points on two of six shooting and those three fouls. And Bacho just one of five from the floor. He does have six rebounds, but just two points. Can they try to find a way to run the offensive set and get them involved? And already we've got a foul away from the ball. That's on Allen. That's his second. Just the six uh, six minute mark left in the first half, and now we're at basically 15 and a half. So you added the first five of this half and the last six of the first half. So you've got about 11 minute span. It's been 28 to 11, WKU over Louisiana Tech. But remember, it's not that the Bulldogs haven't had shot opportunities, it's just that so many of them they took from three and they missed all but one. Keegan Moore has replaced Allen, who wears number 30 in red. Louisiana Tech cannot afford to leave points at the free throw line, and Mangum converts the first. Bulldogs have to get back to their defensive, uh, the basics of their defense. Remember, that's what had Hilltoppers so frustrated early on in this ballgame, the number one defense in Conference USA. About the first seven or eight minutes had the frustrations, and then they've dropped off, and Hilltoppers have been able to find ways to drive the lane and expose them and get to the basket. And some sort of violation in the lane has been detected so Mangum is going to get another opportunity after missing the second shot. Courtesy to Newman for jumping in the lane early and giving him a bonus shot which he takes advantage of and makes. Brandon Newman jumped in a little early so the freebie pays off for the Bulldogs. The two free throws cut the lead in seven. Quick turnaround three from straight away is knocked down. That one just blistered the bottom of the net by Brandon Newman. Jordan Crawford got caught behind a screen in the lane. He was standing right next to Bacho, never got around the screen and left his man wide open. That's Newman's 34th converted triple of the year. And that's just a couple behind the leader. He came into the game tied for second with McHenry. How about that? Boy, just a little hesitation move there by Crawford is all it took. And then he just exploded down the lane to finish that off. Isaiah Crawford comes out, nearly flirted with his fourth foul. He's got to be careful. 22 in white. He's defending Moore. Moore goes too deep. Crawford reaches in, tries to rip it out of his hands, and it's going to go with Louisiana Tech. Boy, that is dangerous for Isaiah Crawford to try to be that aggressive, but he did it cleanly. Here's another look. He keeps his hands down. They call the travel here. Go watch. Here he decides, hey, I'm going to go for that strip. Well, he doesn't drag that other foot, and that's going to be a fourth foul on Crawford. But he, nice heads-up defense to get him to stop on the baseline and cause the turnover. Crawford is anything but timid. You know, that's a word we haven't used a lot tonight, Lynn, turnovers. Just eight for Western Kentucky, just four for Louisiana Tech. Not a lot of giveaways by either team, but there's one there with the steal. Crawford threw it right to McHenry, and then it's taken back by Newman. A three ball, rattles, tip no good. The initial miss by Crawford. McHenry, cut off. Crawford slapped at that one. McHenry misses. And let's see if Louisiana Tech can reduce the lead from eight. 13 minutes and 35 seconds to go.
Jordan Crawford tried that hesitation move. Newman didn't bite on it this time. Last time he fell for it, Crawford flew right past him. Isaiah Crawford takes the three, and Isaiah Crawford shoots a cotton ball. Seven points now for Isaiah Crawford, his first made three-pointer on three attempts. It's a five-point game. Louisiana Tech still with the deficit. I'll tell you what's interesting to watch as a side note, and that is Rodney Howard and Bacho battling down low. Howard number zero in red, Bacho number 13 in white. Keep your eye on those two giants doing battle Howard, in the lane. Howard's got about 20 pounds on him in terms of overall size. They look each other eye to eye, and Howard missed a gimme that last time down. And Newman just missed a gimme. But there was a foul after the ball rolled loose. Foul called on Howard, pulling his arm down. That's Howard's second. Newman got to the basket, just not able to convert. Howard gets the contact. Now he's going to go to the bench. McHenry's going to get a little rest as well. So Western Kentucky's leading scorer is on the bench for the moment. Crawford will shoot free throws. Isaiah can make it a three-point game. That ball sort of comes off sideways out of his hand, doesn't it? Does. It does. Watch the rotation as the release is made. It works for him. 73% shooter from line. It's almost like a screwball. It's at the very end. It's at the very end of his release when his fingers come through and fall through. It's almost a little bit of a sidewinder. Yep. The very top of his of his release. Western Kentucky by three with the basketball. This is Faye at the top. Tries to work a pass down low. Isaiah Crawford That's scrapes it out of his hands. Callum Bay with the trip after Crawford. Once again, you said it. Boy, he flirts and flirts with that line of getting four fouls. Look at this battle down on the paint. But he calls the steal, then he reaches over to pick it up, and there's the foul. Knocking nice. Crawford to the ground. Man. Boy, either Isaiah Crawford doesn't know he has three fouls, or he just doesn't care because he's out there playing like he has no fouls. And Louisiana Tech might need that in this game. Not much has gotten into a rhythm for the Bulldogs. Let's take a timeout, 12.23 to go in the second half. Western Kentucky 53, Louisiana Tech 50. This game coming your way on ESPN Plus from Ruston, Louisiana. Johnny's Pizza House is bringing the bayou straight to your plate. Sweep a trip. Look, here's the battle. Crawford's going to get the deflection, and then he's going to pick up the ball, but watch the hand once he's down, and he goes and grabs his leg right, right here and yeah. pulls him down. You no. Know, a lot of people get frustrated with, with replays, and that's a great job by this crew to see that and take the time and say, we need to look at this again. That's what caused the timeout, but then to upgrade it because they saw something. That's a very good job of looking at that in a, in a very physical play. So the Bulldogs have a chance for a four, maybe a five-point possession. And they trail by one. This so let's see if Louisiana Tech can take advantage of the flagrant foul. And retake the lead for the first time in a while. 9-0 run by Tech in the last. Oh, there's a dunk. Crawford to Bacho. He's the Bacho, Bacho man. Great set play to get Bacho on that alley-oop off that back screen. It's an 11-0 run now for Tech. Isaiah Crawford takes it away. The pass to Mangum is deflected. This is Ree. He almost failed to put it on the floor, but he did so in time. Let's go back to that pass by Crawford, though, that we just saw. Beautifully executed. He fakes left. He dribbles right. He pulls up in the slot. He fires. It's on line but short. Bacho somehow dives in for the rebound. One on three. Do they get Bacho for the foul? No, they call him on a travel. Okay. They didn't They didn't say that any contact, despite what the Louisiana Tech bench was wanting, they said that Bacho went down on his own. Yes, there were three red jerseys around him, but none of the red juries tried to reach in and slap at it. Bacho went down to the ground. And they call him for the they call him for the uh, for the travel. But that possession before here's the highlight coming off that high screen that Bacho sets. Nobody goes on the roll. It's a wide open alley oop touch pass. A perfect pass from Crawford. 
Meanwhile, Bacho continues to flail away, hit the floor. That guy is as tough as a railroad spike. We're going to call the foul on Bacho that time, exchanging underneath as they're going back and forth. And it's getting a little testy now between these two teams. Yes, little, it is. A little extra physicality taking place. Bacho has the advantage of being able to uh, speak in French, if that's necessary. <laughs> Oh, that's a, in, in kickball, that's a double. Devin Ree trying to fight three red jerseys. Unfortunately, went off his foot. Back in the old recess when you got to kick it yeah. off the opposite wall for a home run, that would have been a double in kickball. Unfortunately, it goes back to the Hilltoppers if you're Louisiana Tech. But this is a scoring drop for the Hilltoppers now of the last four minutes and ten seconds. And Bacho is on the bench. He's got three fouls now, does he? Uh, Bacho has three fouls, yes. So he is on the bench, and Miller has come back in, 34 and white. McHenry shoots the floater, and he's got it. Boy, he is really smooth. That, that's, he makes that look easy. That, that is not an easy shot when you're driving, and then you try to pull up, but you're still floating in motion, and then try to shoot it up and over the big man. He does it very well. He now has 14. Mangum. There's his career high tying fifth made three pointer. Who now Mangum now has 21 on the night. At one point he was four out of his first five from three point range. This game is very physical. That foul has to be called on Miller. That's his third. So he has three. Crawford has three. Bacho has three. Miller and Crawford still on the floor. For what it's worth, Crawford came back, as Lynn mentioned, early with those three fouls, but he scored seven points without getting a foul. He's now in double digits with 11. Well, we heard Madison talk about Crawford's ability to play better in the second half, and he tips that, almost got it. Crawford goes down oh, oh, very this, hard. This, yeah, this is not, this is. He is in pain and anguish trying to get up. Now, remember, he's had two serious knee injuries that have kept him out for months and months and months during his career. He's walking this one off. He hit the deck rather violently. There's another look at as he extends to try to get it. You see right there when his Ooh. leg goes down and he slips a little bit of the splits. And the twisted knee. But I, I, he, yeah. It looks like he's going to be able to stay in the game. Well, I wasn't looking so much at how he hit the floor. I was, in terms of his body, I was watching when he slammed the floor with his fist. Yeah. Because we know he's gone through so many injuries. You just keep thinking, oh, no, not again. Because if anybody knows what it would be like, it'd be him. Check by two. That last three-pointer, by the way, for Mangum tied his career high. He's now one point shy of his career high of 22 that he had against Jarvis Christian back in December of 2022. Miller hands it off to Isaiah Crawford. Eight to shoot. Crawford tries to get loose on the step back, then goes inside and draws a foul. Well, I guess we don't have to worry about that knee after that, after that triple stutter step. A little shake and bake with the dribble through the legs and then another hesitation as he then explodes down the lane. Look, there's this, the hesitation. Backs up, then goes down the lane, draws three red jerseys, and will go to the free throw line. Six for ten field goals. I beg your pardon, three for eight. Is that right? Uh, Crawford, Isaiah, yeah. yeah. Crawford's three for eight. I was looking at the other Crawford. Yep. Who's had a really good game. Isaiah Crawford's first miss at the line. It's four for five at the line. Now make it, now make it five and six. Louisiana Tech has come from a ten-point deficit and leads by three after the Bulldogs led by 12 earlier in the first half. Now Bacho is coming back into the game, and Miller goes to the bench. Remember, remember we talked about earlier, too, with Louisiana Tech not have to settle for those threes here in the second half. They've gone to the free throw line 10 times. They're 7 of 10 from the line. WKU's only gone to the line twice. Allen on the weave. Shows you what can happen when you don't settle for those 20-footers. Moore misses off the window. It's put back in. Oh, and a foul call. Yeah, that's Bacha. That's his fourth. 
Oh, they called that on Crawford. Baba Car Fay working really hard to put it back in. They called it on Isaiah Crawford. No, they called it on. Or, they called it on on uh, twenty. On Jordan Crawford. On Jordan Crawford. Yep. Okay. And Fay misses the three-point play opportunity, but it's battered around, and Fay comes away with it. Nobody in a white jersey put a body on a red jersey, and, they, and WKU makes them pay. Indeed, Tyrone Marshall rips down the three, his 19th made triple of the season. So that, that's basics 101 on free throws. When you are on the inside position on defense and they're shooting, you have to back up and put a body on a man. Everybody in a white jersey stood and watched the miss. Hilltoppers went and got it and converted a three-pointer. And it turned out to be a five-point possession, really. Newman alone in the corner, way too strong. Bay rips off the rebound. This is McHenry. Isaiah Crawford guarding him. This is Faye at the top. Allen nearly lost it and travels. Travel. Yep. That's good defense. That time by Mangum who forced that travel. He wanted to go up with it. Mangum got in his face and he got lost in no man's land. Didn't know what to do with it. Came back down and got called for the, tra for the uh, travel. That's now 12 turnovers. Eight and a half thrilling minutes left in this one. Western Kentucky trying to steal a win on the road, leading by two. Plenty of time to shoot, half the clock with which to work. Crawford at the top, trying to find a lane, lays it up and he lays it in. Boy, he's had quietly a big, big game offensively. Yeah, 16 points on 7 of 11 shooting. One of three from deep has an assist as well. And he trails only Mangum in point totals for Louisiana Tech individually well, today. You needed players to step up with your big-time three-pointer and best three-point shooter in the conference not playing tonight. A couple players have done that. Moore puts it off the window. It's batted around. Mangum gets it to Crawford. Jordan Crawford backs away. Macho sets the high pick. Now rolls, but he can't get loose. Crawford is alone at the top. Makes the bounce pass down low to Bacho. He forces it in with the left hand. Yeah, that was an awkward angle, but he was able to get the friendly roll off the glass and then over the top of the rim. And it gives Louisiana Tech a two-point lead. 62-60. 7.15 to go. Tighten the seat belts. Marshall with the lob. His man is right there for the miss, but Faye tips it in. Bay could not convert the lob pass into the dunk, but he was able to get it back and scores after claiming his own offensive yeah. rebound. Tremendous vision, too, because that was cross-court over about five players all in the lane to try to sky up and miss the layup. Crawford is bumped from the ball, and Marshall, who very fortunately was not called for a foul or one of his teammates, and Crawford just let him go. Yep. He didn't want to pick up the foul. Exactly, and that's a smart move by Crawford just to let him roll like that because you don't want to get a cheap one. Chances are you're not going to block it anyway. That was a lot of contact, no whistle. It results in a Louisiana Tech turnover and a costly one. 6.20 to play, 64-62, Western Kentucky. Crawford again. Oh, he's got Boy. another one. He, he is just taking over down the lane. How does that little guy... Get the shots up among the taller trees. You know, you got a little bit of movement and enough patience to find that lane and get to the glass. That's why I keep harping. Don't settle for those threes right now. That's not why you're in this ball game. You've done it because you started attacking the glass and getting fouls. 18 for Jordan Crawford. McHenry with the floater. Oh, he nails another one. Does he ever miss that shot? By the way, we are told Jordan Crawford has set a new career high with 18 points. It is. His season high was at New Mexico at the uh, end of November when he had 12. His career high was 15. He has surpassed both of those here tonight. Isaiah Crawford tried to make a oh, touch nice pass. pass. Down low and a score. And here comes Faye and Western Kentucky again. And a timeout called with 5.23 to go. That turnover by Isaiah Crawford resulted in the point for Western Kentucky. 
and it's now a 68-64 game. The Hilltoppers at Sam Houston by four to open league play has defeated Middle Tennessee, Liberty, Jacksonville State, UTEP, New Mexico State, and FIU. Six wins in a row. If the Bulldogs can pull this out and make it seven, they would tie a school record for the longest win streak in conference play. Crawford left that three ball a little bit short. Now he's forced to defend McHenry. Crawford is taller. McHenry is quicker, quicker and able to create a lot of shots. This yep. is Allen. Look at Bacho defending Howard. So Howard with a jump. Oh, they got Bacho with a foul. They I thought he do. got an extra step. Howard with a really sweet fall away, if you will, jump shot. The jump hook. And that's going to be number four on Bacho. Howard, when we come back, we'll have a chance for a three-point play. And all of a sudden, the lead is six for Western Kentucky. Now or so this game takes on a different dimension. Yeah, well, Howard going to the free throw line after drawing that fourth foul on Bacho, who stays in the game. Four fouls with 444 to go. And the big fellow converts the free throw, making it a seven-point lead. And I believe this possession is critical for Louisiana Tech. Well, the one thing you don't want to do is worry about selling for that three-pointer. Keep doing it like just exactly what he was doing. They called the foul before I could finish the sentence, and that is keep attacking the basket. You were down big early in this half, and that's how you got back into it. Bangham hit one three-pointer, but everything else was done going to the lane and drawing fouls, and that's what Isaiah Crawford did. And he'll get a pair of free throws. He's three of nine from the floor today, but he's five of six from the free throw line. And even though it has not been a typical Crawford game from a scoring standpoint, as is pretty typical for him, he has played better in the second half than he did in the first. Those are two big free throws. Now can the Bulldogs get back to their defensive ways, make one stop at a time. Really, if you can get back-to-back -back stops and be able to convert on the offensive side, they can make this a brand-new ball game again. But you've got to get the work done on the defensive side. Newman is guarding McHenry. McHenry gives it up. Louisiana Tech brings it the other way after the turnover. Crawford for three, a little bit short. Bacho tips it toward Newman, and it's deflected out of bounds. But again, a heck of an idea by Bacho. He is one of the most active big guys you'll see. Yeah, wasn't in a position really to grab the rebound as he was coming from the far side, but trying to slap into his teammate. Hilltoppers knock it out of bounds. But again, I'd go back to attacking the glass. It's just a five-point game. Plenty of time with four minutes to go. And here's Crawford doing just that. Lays it up and in again. He has been like a carnival knife thrower, getting that ball up against the glass and dropping it home. 20 points on 9 of 13 shooting for Jordan Crawford. The best he's ever scored. A three-point game. Howard is there. Crawford is there. They bump. And it's going to be Crawford on the foul. And we'll take a timeout. Free throws will be forthcoming when we return. It's a three-point lead for Western Kentucky. Welcome to Trenton Dental Center in Trenton. When he got the job at Louisiana Tech, it was an easy choice to add him to his roster. Madison, thank you for that background. As Howard draw, draws the, uh, nails the first free throw, he'll get the second one coming. But 43 between Mangum and Crawford, they have carried the load by far for Louisiana Tech tonight. And there's a problem in the foul category, Victor, for the Bulldogs. Yeah, you have Isaiah Crawford now with four. In fact, on that last play, it was Crawford and Bacho. Both of them were surrounding Howard. Bulldog fans were hoping it wasn't going to be on Bacho for his fifth, but doesn't make it any easier now when Isaiah Crawford now has his fourth. Bacho has four, and you know the Hilltoppers are very aware of that and are going to try to pick on both of them. It's a five-point game. The Hilltoppers leading 73-68. Newman fades, fires, and scores. That was good patience. He had a chance to, to take the shot the first time, but then he waited and waited, and then when the defense decided to part ways, he was able to put up that jumper. And that's a huge conversion for the youngster and his Louisiana Tech teammates. 73-70, Western Kentucky leading. 
Howard and Bacho down low. He got Bacho in the air, but he misses the short shot, and Mangum is there to snare the rebound. That's one Western Kentucky would probably convert if it had another opportunity, but it did not go their way that time, and Louisiana Tech can cut it to one or tie it with a three ball. This for the tie. Short, Marshall rebound. And a hotly contested shot way out in the corner by Allen. A little bit of a force for the Bulldogs. No need with 2.30 to go. No need to have to force a corner three with a man in your face. Howard makes the catch behind Bacho and he lays it in and that was nicely done. A super feed down to Howard on the move. That's just smart basketball. They're going right at the big man knowing that Bacho's going to have to make a decision. At some point now with just over two minutes to go, he'll make the decision whether or not to make an aggressive play. If he foul out, so be it. But Western Kentucky trying to force the issue. That's just well played to go to their big man. And Crawford will go to the free throw line after soliciting the foul. For his part tonight, Howard is now the leading scorer for the Hilltoppers. 17 points on just four made field goals. But for a guy that shoots 64% from the line on the year, Howard is 9 for 9 tonight at the strike. Meanwhile, Louisiana Tech leaves another opportunity there. Now 15 to 22 for the game. And Jordan Crawford will try to at least get one point out of this trip to the free throw line. He does not. One for five. He's one for five now. And then a bumping line. foul on Mangum trying to chase the rebound. Oh, that didn't work out at all for the home was, team, was, did it? That was worst case scenario. Missed, missed two gimmies with the clock not running, and then another foul sent him back to the free throw line. And a chance to move the lead to seven with 2.14 to go. The Hilltoppers are expanding their lead and now have six of their last seven field goals let alone the success they've had at the free throw line. These will be the first free throws of the night for Brandon Newman, who has five field goals and 11 points. Bacho nearly lost it, but he saved the rebound down to Newman. Newman on the run. Crawford thought about the three. Two minutes left. Crawford takes it, comes up short. Crawford sails in for the rebound, puts it back up too strong, a foul called. And Crawford, who missed a couple of shots, nonetheless, will have an opportunity to score at the strike. Well, it's a heads-up play by Crawford because he knew this three-pointer was short. Watch, he steps back, but he's got a big man and Howard on him at 6'11". But when he launched it, he knew it was going to be short. And look at the explosiveness down the lane to get his own rebound. Can't get the three-point play by getting the putback, but at least can go to the line. Six for seven now at the stripe after that conversion. Again, 155 to go. If he makes this, it's just a one possession name, a game, but you don't need to get the three. You've got to get a stop. And you cannot leave points at the stripe. 16 to 25 now, nine missed free throws, but you're still in good shape. You just have to make a stop on the defensive end. That's going to be it for Crawford. They're going to call him with the leg. Explosive Thanks. explosive play there by Marshall, who went past Isaiah Crawford, and they called him for sticking out his knee and getting him, and that's going to be the game for him. Crawford tried to block the baseline and could not do it without fouling. And so Isaiah Crawford is gone. 13 points on just 3 of 11 shooting. 6 of 8 from the free throw line. Most of his production came in the second half. No, no question. As has been his custom lately. But Louisiana Tech will be without Isaiah Crawford's services for the final 99 seconds. And now with Isaiah Crawford out, the Hilltoppers are going to look to try to attack Bacho. If they start getting into an offensive set, they're going to keep Howard on the floor. And you, can be you better believe they're going to go back to the big man and let him try to work Bacho over and see if they can get Bacho to commit. Meanwhile, Tyrone Marshall will shoot free throws. He's got a pair coming. Remember earlier in this half, we saw Louisiana Tech not put a body on a red jersey. What did you remember? Was that a five-point play when they missed and they wound up yeah. hitting a three? 
You have to box out now. You need possession. You've got to get a body on a body. It's a five-point lead for Western Kentucky and a critical possession for Louisiana Tech. Boy, what a Crawford. beautiful pass. What a pass by Newman to see Crawford coming on the same side of the floor. It's one thing when you're coming from the opposite corner, but that was same corner, and he led him with a one-handed bounce pass. 22 for Crawford, an amazing performance. This crowd is imploring defense, defense. 70 seconds to go. 76-73, Western Kentucky with the lead. Howard at the top will not shoot from there. Three seconds to fire. Two seconds. One. The shot's in the air. No good. Tip. Controlled by Moore. Oh, they can back out and use some more time. Boy, all of that work on the defensive end to force a shot with one second on the clock and then to give them another 20. It's a one-possession game, a three-point lead. Eight to shoot, 40 left in the contest. McHenry puts it on the floor, kicks it left side, more for three, rattles out. Newman's got the rebound with 31 seconds to play. And Louisiana Tech will take a timeout and talk it over with 28 seconds remaining. And Western Kentucky playing defense. Louisiana Tech owns the ball with a three-point deficit right now. Oh, Ingambacho and Crawford on the floor as well. Look, if there's one reason why... I would, I would have a problem if Louisiana Tech tries to go for a quick two because the strength of this team is defense. So you can try to force a steal and get out. Let's see what Coach Hester drew up in the huddle. Well, they're not going for a quick two. Crawford. Uh-oh. Offensive foul away from the ball on Bacho. My goodness. How in the world can that happen? Trying to set a high screen, and he moved, and instead of staying still with his man dribbling back and forth, they get Bacho on motion. Oh, setting worst, an illegal screen. And a worst-case scenario for Louisiana Tech as it gives up the ball away from the ball on an illegal pick by Bacho. And my goodness, my goodness, it almost it almost looked like Howard pushed Bacho from behind, which then pushed Bacho into another player and made it look like it was Bacho moving. But it's a very interesting angle. Let's take another look here. Watch Howard from behind who gives a little body bump to Bacho, who then goes into Tegan Moore, and they call the foul on Bacho setting the screen, but they're not going to take another look at it. They're going to leave it there, so Bacho and Crawford both fell out. 20 and a half seconds to go. And my goodness, Louisiana Tech owned the ball with a three-point deficit, had a chance to tie, and right now, it's still down by three, but does not have ownership of the basketball. This has to be an instant steal or then an instant foul. You, you got to foul hack, right away. Got a hack and hope right here. Yep. Yeah, you can't wait that much time now. But every second can be critical. You've got to foul immediately. Don't foul with two seconds elapsed if you can do it with one second. Right, and, and you understand there might be hesitation because you know McHenry's an 83% free throw shooter, but at this point, you don't have any choice. It was wise, of course, for Western Kentucky to get the ball in their best shooter's hands. Just a reminder, coming in tonight on top of the standings, Louisiana Tech six and one in conference. Sam Houston six and two. New Mexico State at five and three, and then WKU there in fourth at four and four. McHenry coolly drops both free throws. And it's a five-point game right now. Crawford on the move. Lays it up and in, but he was fouled before the shot. The whistle clearly blew the play dead as Crawford was moving toward the bucket before shooting. Let's call it 14 seconds to play. But a five-point lead, so Louisiana Tech needs a score and then needs the ball back without allowing a score. First and foremost, you've got to get to the free throw line and convert. And that's something that Louisiana Tech has struggled a little bit with tonight. Usually they've been a pretty good free throw shooting team, but tonight 64% on 16 of 25 shooting on the season as a team. Louisiana Tech is shooting just under 70%, so they're a little below that tonight, having left nine opportunities at the free throw line 
right now you have to hit these two to make it a three-point game and then you go full court face-to-face -face press to try to get the steal a quick steal or an instant foul Crawford just missed a couple of free throws it has, he's not getting any arch under those free throws. Yeah, it's now, a flat. It's a very flat shot and a little too much muscle behind it hitting the back of the iron. Now one for six. His last three misses have all looked exactly the same. Oh, boy. He got the roll that time. Now you got a face guard. Face guard, full court press. If they get it in, it's got to be an instant foul. But it's still a five-point lead, and there is the immediate foul. We've got a discrepancy. One scoreboard says 78-74. The other one, now they switched it. It's a four-point yeah. four lead. He had a chance to make two, cut it to three. Just made that made that last one. Let's see what Howard does. Howard's been the story for them. Nine for nine at the free throw line. Oh, what a time to miss his first one of the night. But it's still a two-possession game. And can't get beyond that, even if Howard makes this free throw. But Louisiana Tech is going to have to get a score and make it pronto. It's going to be, it's going to be in the hands of Crawford or Newman. And they're going to have to go blistering down the floor. Enoch Columbe comes back in the ball game, replacing Howard. Here's Crawford on the move. He blows by Newman, lays it up to, and it's in with the left hand. That comes with 8.1 seconds to go, and Louisiana Tech is still with a chance here. Not the greatest of chances are two teams in the top four of the standings. Louisiana Tech will be at Liberty, then Jacksonville State, Florida International, UTEP, and New Mexico State on the road. A one and one. Opportunity coming here for Western Kentucky and McHenry. Well, it's, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be it's going to be two free throws. The, the one and one they were showing was actually for number eleven. Yeah. The foul was on Henderson. He's going to get two here. You can almost put these automatically in the books. He shoots 80, almost eighty-five percent for a reason. And that free throw makes it a two-possession game. Now taking over the scoring lead for their team with 19. Howard on eight with 18. The Hilltoppers will retreat. And here comes Crawford again. Gets it up to Newman. Shoots the floater. It's blocked. And goes out of bounds. It'll stay with Louisiana Tech. But 1.3 seconds to go. And a five-point lead in Western Kentucky is going to do something that is extremely rare in this building. And that's come in and beat Louisiana Tech at home. Not a lot of people over what the last decade plus can say yeah. that they left Ruston with a win. This game has been, has been every bit as entertaining as we thought it would be between these two top teams in the conference. But you got to give the Hilltoppers credit. Such a slow, sluggish start. They fought their way through it to take a little bit of a lead at half. Louisiana Tech fought back in the second half, but foul trouble by Bacho and Isaiah Crawford eventually did them in, and the Hilltoppers did a very important win on the road. So after a slow start and then a couple of runs which regained the lead for Louisiana Tech, Bulldogs at one point led by 12. Biggest lead for Western Kentucky was 10, and Western Kentucky holds on and uh, comes away with an impressive victory, 81 to 76. So Western Kentucky does to Louisiana Tech what only one other team has done in Conference USA. And